Hey y'all, here we are on the bench once again, and we're looking at the Kimber K6S. This is the 2-inch double action only version. This is the first version they came out with. They've come out with others, but this was the one that started it all. Um, this gun is definitely put, set up for the uh, concealed carry mindset. Um, we're going to look at it today. So I'm going to start with the brief specs and then just go into what I think about it. So the gun weighs about 23 ounces, which isn't actually that bad, all things considered. Um, I know J-Frames, you know, they're aluminum and whatnot. They, uh, I think my 638 is about 14 ounces, so you're only gaining 9 ounces. And with the 9 ounce gain, you're getting stainless steel, which is heavier, so it won't recoil as bad. And you're gaining 357 mag uh, capability, which those aluminum airweight J-Frames, most of them do not have, uh, save the scandium frame ones. Um... But so that's what you get six shot, which is real nice, and also an improvement over the Smith and Wessons and the Rugers. Um, basically, as far as I know, as far as snubby, uh, snubby revolvers this size, you basically got Colt and or uh, Kimber for that. Uh, yeah, I might have missed one, but again, that's as far as I know, the two main big brands that have six shot snub noses. Uh, Colt, I was, I was, I've been looking for a snubby 357 for a while, and Colt, with their new stuff coming out, I've heard different things, you know, I know there were some issues with the Python, and honestly, I just didn't want to, uh, pull the trigger on that yet, because some of the options that this had over the Colt made me prefer this. Um, so fit and finish on this gun, that was one of the things Kimber really went on about, and I gotta say, they did a good job. Um, all the edges, including the front of the cylinder here, back of the cylinder, all leading edges, everything has been smooth. There is no uh, rough edges, nothing that's going to grab or dig into your hand. Really did a nice job polishing or smoothing out this gun. It's like a brush stainless finish, but a really good job. There was only one thing that I will say. I found one defect, and of course it was in the worst place possible. I'm going to try and spit a, uh, split a picture in here to show you. But there was a burr on the crown. It was very small, but it was a definite burr. It, it uh, failed the Q-tip test. And I had to take it to someone to have it fixed. They, you know, did it real quick. No problems there. Kimber did offer to stand behind it. I didn't feel like in this current climate to have to try and uh, fight back and forth to get a gun back from a gun company. Uh, any, you know, you've seen my Smith & Wesson videos. You'll know why. Um, so I had that burr fixed, kind of sad to see that, especially on the crown, but, you know, accidents happen, and it was fixed promptly. So that was the only defect on the gun I found. Everything else was completely smoothed out. The gun has been 100% reliable. Um, features of the gun. So, again, six-shot cylinder, right, which is a nice plus because, um, the five shots, well, there's nothing wrong with them. It's just nice having six. Sights on this gun. Sights are one of the things that really drew me to this gun, right? Again, shooting a lot of J-frames, a lot of other small snub nose revolvers. Sights are usually something you don't have a decent set of. This gun, you have windage adjustable rear, white dot, right? You can uh, change the front sight as well. Uh, I believe you can get night sights from Kimber. I believe there's a couple other companies also offer different sights. Me, I see no purpose in changing them because, again, I don't know how well it's going to focus. But there's a very clean sight picture, right? Very clean, especially for a snub nose revolver. Um, again, since six that cylinder I mentioned, you'll you'll notice something. There's not much of a gap between the back of the cylinder and the uh, frame of the gun because it's a recessed cylinder, something you don't see on many guns nowadays. Uh, companies like Smith & Wesson and stuff used to do it. They stopped doing it to cut costs. Um, they recessed them here on the Kimber, which is nice because while it probably doesn't affect the performance of the gun, it just makes it look cleaner. Um, short ejector rod. I have noticed that sometimes you do have to give it a good thump to eject full-size 357 Magnum casings. To be expected with a short 2-inch barrel, you're going to have a short ejector rod. There's just no way around that. Um, button style release kind of reminds you of Ruger, right? Um, I like it. I know some people aren't a big fan of it. I don't mind it because it's still basically, I'm used to shooting Smith, and it's still basically the same action to open the gun, you know, using your thumb, push open, you know, flip up and all that, however your particular, um, method of reloading, uh, goes, but I don't mind it. I've found it to be quite 
positive, uh, nice to use, right? No, doesn't slip. They knurled it there so it, your finger doesn't slip, right? Really nice. Trigger on this gun. Trigger is something, once again, Kimber came and, and boasted about, and I will say it's a nice trigger. It's a very smooth trigger, very clean break, right? Very easy to stage. Trigger on this, compared to a Smith or even a Colt, I gotta say, it, the trigger hand is what sold me on this gun. When I was in the shop looking at this gun, um, you know, I dry fired it, and I was just like, the second I pulled that trigger, I'm like, that, that right there blows Colt or and Smith and Wesson and Ruger out of the water. It's not they they claim it doesn't stack, it doesn't feel like it stacks, and again, very easy to stage. Um, you know, especially with only having double action only. That's something to me that's important and very clean. Very nice. Reset's not terrible. Just a really nice trigger on this gun. I will say, if, if there was one thing if I was going to say that was good on this gun, it would be the trigger. It's definitely my favorite part of it. Um, open back strap. That is something, again, when you're flying three, full power 357 magnum out of it, it thumps a little. The, um, you'll notice it has these uh, grips on here. This is what the gun originally comes with. The rubber, again, does not cover the back strap. But they are... They're all right. They kind of feel a little squared off and a little blocky in my hands. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I switched them, because these are uh, VZ grips, and uh, they've been dyed by me. There's a video on that for anybody interested. Um, they just felt better in the hand. Um, unfortunately, I haven't gotten to shoot the gun much with these grips on, because ammo is pretty much impossible to get right now, which is why, I guess I should mention, unfortunately, I don't really have targets. I've shot it a few times, but I haven't been able to save any of the targets because of everything going on with the move and everything that happened. Um, but the, sh the gun grouped about as you would expect a snub nose too. You know, you definitely, you're going to be able to hit your target, no problem, but it's definitely not a bullseye gun by any means. I'm sure it's capable of, a, of it, but me with my eyesight and uh, using the sights provided, I got decent groups, nothing crazy. Which is exactly what you'd expect because, again, this gun is set up for self defense. It's not a target gun. Um, recoil is, again, it, it thumps you good in the hand, but it's nothing crazy. Again, being all steel frame, you got a little extra weight there. And, uh, it, it, again, it's, it's not something you want to hand a kid. But if you're used to shooting high recoil stuff like 357, 44 mag like me, it's it's nothing that you're gonna it's nothing that's gonna kill you. So recoil's not terrible. It's what you would expect for a snub nose 357 Magnum. Um, overall, I, I really like the gun. Like I said, it's I know Kimber kind of gets a, a back and forth rep because of some of their issues with some of their stuff. Uh, I, again, my only my only. Uh, annoyance with this gun was that little burr on the crown but again that you know stuff like that happens and they did offer to fix it pretty much immediately once they found out about it uh speed loaders for this thing i know some people mentioned speed loaders um because obviously the only official speed loader you can get for it is through kimber which is this which i have one of the only the reason i have one of these is because they are thirty dollars a piece so there is different HKS speed loaders being offered for this gun, or I'm sorry, being basically substituted for this gun. This is a uh, this is HKS DS. I forget the exact gun model this is for, but these work as well. They don't go in all the way, but they work well enough to use. Some people have sent them down. So for the moment, the only, I guess again besides the burr, the only other really slight downside on this gun is the aftermarket. Uh, community is just getting geared up for them. Again, speed loaders, you know, the only one that's really made for it, I believe, is this one. They might make one other, but I don't, I haven't been able to find anything, especially availability right now. Um, but yeah, so like I said, that's my only little fault is aftermarket stuff can be kind of hard to find and the little burr on the crown. But other than that, really nice little gun, really. Uh, really curious to see what else Kimber does. You know, it'd be interesting to see Kimber do some stuff maybe in 44. But, um, you know, hey, it's their first revolver, so uh, I'll give them a little bit of a break before I start hounding them for something in 44. But uh, that's my thoughts on it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them down below, and have a good day.